ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय आयोर हरति वाय पुंसाम उद्यान अस्तम चयन सौ तस्थे यक्षणो नीत उत्तम श्लोक वार्तया This verse indirectly confirms the greater importance of utilizing the human form of life to realize our lost relationship with the supreme lord by acceleration of devotional service. Time and tide wait for no man. So the time indicated by the sunrise and the sunset will be uselessly wasted if such time is not properly utilized for realizing identification of spiritual values. even a fraction of the duration of life wasted cannot be compensated by any amount of gold who knows the verse It begins with the same word as this verse this bhagavatam verse ayo ayo shakshana ekopi na labhya swarna koti bihi two of this same ayusha same as in this verse and kshana so even a moment of our life uh once it's gone you can't get it back even by even if you offer millions of gold coins you can't get back even one moment it's not not available it's gone so prabhupada is shila prabhupada is uh quoting the verse well giving the translation of that half verse which i believe is from Chanakya, is it Chanakya? Sure. Yeah. Many of such verses are from Chanakya. Some are from Hitopadesh. Like this, there are several such works. Uh, human life is simply awarded to a living entity, Jiva, so that he can realize his spiritual identity and his permanent source of happiness. A living being especially the human being is seeking happiness because happiness is the natural situation of the living entity but he is vainly seeking happiness in the material atmosphere a living being is constitutionally a spiritual spark of the complete whole and his happiness can be perfectly perceived in spiritual activities the lord is the complete spirit whole and his name form quality pastimes entourage and personality are all identical with him once a person comes in to contact with any one of the above mentioned energies of the lord through the proper channel of devotional service the door to perfection is immediately opened in the bhagavad gita the lord has explained such contact in the following words endeavors in devotional service are never baffled nor is their failure a slight beginning of such activities is sufficient even to deliver a person from the great ocean of material fears what's the verse don't you say what's the verse anyone i'll read the english again it's somewhat different translation to the one which shila proper gives in his bhagavad gita as it is endeavors in devotional service are never baffled nor is their failure a slight beginning of such activities is sufficient even to deliver a person from the great ocean of material fears hmm hey i everyone speaking all at once i can't huh? no 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 that's not bhagavad gita no you're way off way off it's nice that you know the verse but you're not going to completely It's got nothing to do with this verse. Nasato. Neha Bhikramo. No. Neha Bhikramo. Neha Bhikramo Nasho. Yeah, I, I started calling the wrong verse. 
Neha Vikrava Nasha Sti Pratyavayo Navidyate Swapa Mapyasya Dharma Satrayate Mahato Bhayat. As a highly potent drug injected intravenously. Do you know what that means, intravenously? It just means stuck in your veins for all practical purposes. Uh, a highly potent drug injected intravenously acts at once on the whole body. The transcendental topics of the Lord injected through the ear of the pure devotee can act very efficiently. Oral realization of the transcendental messages implies total realization just as fructification of one part of a tree implies fructification of all other parts. You all follow that example? Can you understand what it means? If one realizes by hearing oral realization of the transcendental messages implies total realization. That's that's full realization. Just like if you see one part of a tree maybe one part of a tree, one branch of a tree is coming past your window and you see that the tree has started to give fruits so you can understand that the rest of the tree has also you don't have to see the whole tree so if one realizes by hearing that is equivalent to uh, complete realization this realization for a moment in the association of pure devotees like Shukadev Goswami prepares one's complete life for eternity and thus the sun fails to rob the pure devotee of his duration of life inasmuch as he is constantly busy for the devotional service of the Lord purifying his existence. Death is a symptom of the material infection of the eternal living being only due to in material affection, sorry, only due to material infection is the eternal living entity subjected to the law of birth, death, old age and disease. The materialistic way of pious activities like charity is recommended in the Smriti Shastras, as quoted by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Money given in charity to a suitable person is guaranteed bank balance in the next life. Such charity is recommended to be given to a Brahmana. If the money is given in charity to a non-Brahmana without Brahminical qualification, the money is returned in the next life in the same proportion. If it is given in charity to a half-educated Brahmana, even then the money is returned double. If the money is given in charity to a learned and fully qualified Brahmana, the money is returned a hundred and a thousand times. And if the money is given to a Veda Paraga, one who has factually realized the path of the Vedas, it is returned by unlimited multiplication. The ultimate end of Vedic knowledge is realization of the personality of Godhead, or Krishna, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita. There is a guarantee of money is being returned if given in charity, regardless of the proportion. Similarly, a moment passed in the association of a pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental messages of the Lord is a perfect guarantee for eternal life or returning home back to Godhead. Madhama gatva punar janma navidyate. In other words, a devotee of the Lord is guaranteed eternal life. A devotee's old age or disease in the present life is but an impetus to such guaranteed eternal life. Ayo harati vai pung sam udyan astang chayana sao tasyarte yakshano nita uttama shloka vartaya. Both by rising and by setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all-good personality of Godhead. This uh, <coughs> momentous verse, or uh, uh, highly uh, important verse, one that uh, prods us into thoughtfulness of what we're doing with our lives is spoken in relation to Parikshit Maharaj 
meeting and being instructed by Sri Shukadev Goswami. It's been discussed that when Vyasakis to Bhagavan Vasudeva Parayanaha, Vyasaki, the son of Vyasa, Shukadev Goswami, who is called Bhagavan, as he's very powerful, and Vasudeva Parayana, he's attached to the son of Vasudeva Krishna. When he met Pariksit, there must have been discussion of Krishna. And the sages at Naimisharanya, they are very eager to hear about this. They're establishing the importance of hearing about Krishna. That in fact there's really nothing else that we should be doing in our lives. Hearing, that in, when we say hearing, that means shavanadi shuddha chitte kareyodha. Shavan is used as a, a generic term for all the processes of devotional service by which one's pure consciousness is revived. It all begins with hearing. Hearing must always be there. Hearing about Krishna. As Srila Prabhupada points out in a first canto purport, we're always hearing about something. There's always some kind of talk going on about this, that or the other. I, I remember hearing in one English lecture Srila Prabhupada gave. He, was, he started speaking in Hindi just to uh, exemplify the point of the things that people talking uh, talk about. Is cheese ka kya bhav hai? What is what is the price of this thing? So this is the in the market people are talking like this. Uh, but time should be utilized for hearing about Krishna, which means hearing about Krishna, chanting about Krishna, remembering Krishna, worshipping Krishna, praying to Krishna, identifying oneself as a servant of Krishna, serving the Lord as feet of Krishna, identifying oneself as a friend of Krishna, and fully surrendering to Krishna. And it all begins with hearing. So people who don't hear about Krishna they are as if sitting on a time bomb. Tick, 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 tick. They don't, they are going on with their life, is cheese ka kya bhav hai, and all this kind of thing. What is the price of this? Their life is going on and they are as if unaware that any moment at a specific time, the bomb is going to go off and they're all going to be blasted. So we all have our individual time bombs. Generally, people don't all die at once, unless there is a bomb. Then you get a lot of people dying all at once. But generally, we go one by one. But it's guaranteed. As sure as death. Is there anything as sure as death? It's Guaranteed. That is, that is, uh, what is that? Jatasya hi druvarjan. Mrityu. Death is guaranteed for one who is born. But there is some kind of person who doesn't die. That's Krishna. When he, he doesn't die. Krishna doesn't die. And his pure devotees, they don't really, they don't die in the same sense. Because, a Vaishnav dies to live. He doesn't die. Just as Krishna comes into this world by his own wish and leaves by his own wish. So a devotee may come into... A, a materialist comes into this world impelled by his previous karmic reactions. But if he's fortunate enough to come in contact with a pure devotee, then he leaves this world leaving behind his karmic reactions to go to Krishna. Or if one's a pure devotee, he also comes on the order of Krishna, not impelled by 
karmic reactions. So, uh, for most people, their life is it's simply uh, if they're not cultivating devotional service, they're simply passing time until their next death. That's all. Like the like the uh, timer with the sand inside it, egg timer. Do you know what that is? I hope you don't. Egg timer it has the sand in there and one drop, one or two drops drop at the time. And when the sand has fallen, then it's finished. It's all over. So like that. Time is tick, tick, ticking away. And with death, everything. Mrityu sarva harascharham. Everything is taken away. Everything that we falsely identify with ourselves. Unless we hear about Krishna. So, the value of time and how it should be utilized, this is being discussed here. Now, we shouldn't think that, okay, well, I'm a devotee, so I'm using my time properly, so it's all, everything's okay. I don't have to uh, worry because. As much as we spend our time hearing, chanting about remembering and serving Krishna, then our life is being nourished. And as we are not perfect devotees, we are inclined toward maya, that much we misuse our time, that much we are going like a pendulum, swinging back towards material life. It's not just that because we are in the association of devotees that everything is perfect. We have to see also how to utilize our time. That we should utilize our time for hearing and chanting about Krishna. But there are many things which take away our attention from that. Eating or even the thought of eating. Preparation for eating. Either you grow the food or you have to go to the bazaar, purchase, bring it back, cut it, cook it, uh, eat it, digest it, all these things. You can say someone, what are you doing sitting there? I'm digesting my food. (laughs) I'm not doing nothing. Busy digesting. So it's uh, sleeping takes so much of our time. Brushing the teeth, so many things. But you may say, well, brushing the teeth is also mentioned in Shastra. It's also part of devotional service. If we do it in, all these things can be done in devotional service. Just like the whole act of cooking can be done in devotional service. Instead of thinking, uh, how to pack my belly so that not even one grain of salt more can fit inside it. We should think how to please Krishna and eating, how we shall, not eating exactly, but serving Krishna, or offering, offering respect that Krishna is very merciful, he has given this. Uh, But the point is, we shouldn't waste time. Don't waste time. Time is tick, 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 ticking away. Every moment. For the materialist, it's ticking away. For the devotee, his life is nourished if he hears about Krishna. That's a fact. But that should be more of a uh, an inspiration to utilize time for Krishna consciousness. Not to waste time. It's, so much time can be wasted in just uh, talking about things which are not very important, thinking about things which are not very important, uh, doing things which are not very important. <laughs> uh, prajalpa, talking, blah, 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 this, this, that, that. The uncontrolled tongue likes to speak so many different things. 
talking about things unrelated to devotional service. Time. Procrastination is the thief of time. The English saying. Srila Prabhupada quotes another English saying here. Time and tide wait for no man. So it's not Shastra. It's an English saying. But it's true. So it's a it's an ancient saying which is true either in the material sphere or in the spiritual sphere. Time doesn't wait. If we say, time, uh, just stand still for me. I'm late, so just stop the clock. But the clock, you can stop it, but time doesn't stop. And tide also. If you have to, the, uh, if you have to sail, you decide to sail your boat, you have to wait for the high tide. But you're not quite ready. But the tide won't wait. The tide will come in and go out. And if you're not ready, then you have to wait another day or half day for it to come in again. So, time, tide, trains, they don't wait. Well, a train might wait for some people. If, if it's the head of the South Central Railway, he, they, might wait, they might keep the train for him. Politicians, they might wait. Politicians generally don't go by train. They might do. Oh, now he's on the train coming to Salem. Was it? Somewhere. Recently, there was a politician on the train. Got down at some small station. That was the night I was awake all night. Which train? Which was that? Chennai to Salem. He got down at some small station. Some minister of higher education, I was told. Miserable guy. Couldn't get a smile out of him. It's just so time and tide wait for no man. And what's that other saying I just said? Hmm? Procrastination is the thief of time. It's almost a what's the word? It's procrastination means wasting time. Put it, it, no, it, it literally means putting things off. I'll do it later. Dirga Sutra is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Person in the mode of ignorance, one of his symptoms. Dirga Sutri takes a long time to do things. That procrastination is actually taking a long time to do things is one thing, and procrastination means putting it off. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. And then it's never done, or it just becomes too late. Dressing, dressing, dressing to go to the wedding, and by the time you've dressed so nicely, and the wedding time is over. <laughs> So, beautifully dressed, but too late. So, don't waste time. It's a good motto. Srila Prabhupada often, well, at least sometimes he would say that for any success, either material or spiritual, even material success, although there's nothing really materially successful, but what is considered material success, one should not waste time. If you, if you want to be successful in any endeavor, then we have to utilize our time properly. We have to, if you have to do something important. This uh, Bill Gates, he started off as just a, another American citizen of no particular financial position. He became very rich not by thinking simply thinking about it. There is a book, Think and Grow Rich, famous book. But it's not just by thinking. You have to work. Nahi sup tesya singh hasya pravishante mokhe mrigam. This, uh, the king of the jungle is the lion. But it's not because he's the lion that the animals come and bow down before him and say, now I have come to be eaten by you. He has to go out and catch them. <laughs> so, we have to utilize our time. Either materially or sp spiritually. What are, we do what are we doing with our time? We have to utilize our time by chanting, hearing, serving, uh, not wasting any time. Of course, that doesn't mean that we should be necessarily just completely wired up 
and stressed and and uh, completely. Uh, we can also be relaxed in the sense. Just like Srila Prabhupada was amazing in that he did so much. Every day he would translate, he would travel, he would meet people, he would give class, he would give advice. But he was relaxed. It wasn't that he, you'd think if someone's got a very heavy workload, they'll be very, very stressed. But Srila Prabhupada was generally his countenance was very relaxed. And he had a whole worldwide movement to manage and so many letters coming in. He, did, he dealt with it in due course of time. He'd have a massage for more than two hours every day. Two daytime massage, nighttime massage. He would joke with his with various people. So uh, fully engaged Fully busy, not wasting time, uh, intense, no doubt. I, I said that Srila Prabhupada is very relaxed. At the same time, he's very intense, very intense personality. Uh, so, that main point that we should always be engaged in the service of Krishna. Otherwise, the sun is right. Today is one of the few days of the year in Velo when we don't see the sun. Otherwise, generally, the must be one of the hottest places in India, I think. In, in, in South, in all of India, is it? In all of India? Andramo. If you see the average temperature. Actually, North India, Delhi, Allahabad, that side gets very hot, but then in the winter it's cold. But Andhra, yeah, if you go north a little bit, there's uh, Anantapur, Kadapa, those places. That's even hotter, huh? I see. Just, yeah. Anyway, it's hot enough. <laughs> we're, not, we're not praying to Krishna, please increase the heat. So with every rising and setting of the sun, we say, it's another day. Another day has come, another day has gone. We don't see how our life is going away. It's so gradual. We don't notice how, oh, another day, another day. And then our very nice young face, and one day we look in the mirror and say, oh, there's some gray hair. Oh, of course nowadays, 20 years old, people have gray hairs. <laughs> really, Kali Yoga. I think that's... Uh, Maybe due to chlorine in the water also. That may be a possible cause. What is it? Someone said something? In Dubai, I see everyone's got grey hair. So unless they put this mahindi in it. Oh, so this, uh, but you see, oh, so what's that? What's that line? Oh, 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 I'm growing old. There's a wrinkle. And then gradually, the whole thing just, collapses the influence of time and you know that you can go to the doctor you can do this and that but actually it's irreversible it's it once once the the hearing starts to go the digestion power digestive power goes out memory everything seeing it all goes and you know it's all sign the body is Winding down. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And then, one morning, you don't get up. The sun gets up, <laughs> but you go down, if you haven't heard about Krishna. You go down, down, down to the nether worlds, to the lower planets. So better to utilize our time for hearing and chanting about Krishna. So it's very poetic language, how it's said. But you know, Thakur says similarly, this Udita tapana hoi layasta dinge lo bali hoi be besta tabe keno ebe alasha hoi nabhaja hridaya raja Beautiful poetry. 
how he expresses. Uddita tapan. Tapan means the the heater who makes everything hot. The sun. The sun has risen. And again it's it will set. Uh, in the, uh, day day has come. Okay, let's get busy. So we're very busy. Busy working, doing our work. But uh so we're very busy, but why? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, we're so busy in material activities, then why are we lazy in the matter of worshipping the Lord of our heart? Recently this uh, Bal Thakur, he died in Tamil Nadu, People, he means nothing at all to anyone. In Bombay, very big personality. So he was called Hindu Hridai Samrat, the emperor of the heart of the Hindus. Only the Hindus. But real lord of the heart is Krishna, with all due respect, which we have to offer. Otherwise we could be in trouble. To, yeah, people are afraid of him. They're not afraid of Krishna. Why are they afraid of him? They're not, they should be afraid of Krishna. If we don't worship Krishna, then our whole life is completely spoiled. Completely wasted. So, we should teach this. Teach this to everyone. Why are you wasting your life? I heard this, it's another of those Prabhupada says that uh, Srila Prabhupada once in America he visited a hippie commune uh, which in which the rule was that everyone goes around naked. Several of Prabhupada's leading disciples came from there, including one of our uh, two, maybe three sannyasis and one who was a guru. He's passed away now. So Srila Prabhupada was, one uh, young man was there and Prabhupada said to him, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm doing some gardening. Prabhupada said, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your life? So, we should also think uh, now we've, by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, we've come to this Krishna consciousness. Our life is more or less on the right track. But we should also think, what am I doing with my life? Am I, am I fully utilizing it in the service of Srila Prabhupada and Krishna? I've got this opportunity of Krishna consciousness. Am I, am I utilizing it every moment? Am I cultivating material desires? Or am I, am I properly utilizing this life so that I won't get born again, so that I'll go to Krishna? Am I serving Srila Prabhupada's movement in the best possible way? Even having come to Krishna consciousness, we can become complacent. That we just take it as a kind of routine. In the beginning we're often enthusiastic, but after some time we're like, oh, it's another day. Get up. Finished. Okay, what's next? Nothing to do. Okay. We become, instead of becoming fully enlivened, we should be ever more enlivened. Anandam buddhi vardhanam patipadam purnamritasvardhanam. Instead of feeling how this Sankirtan movement is increasing the ocean of transcendental bliss and how we are tasting nectar at every step. Instead we just take it as a routine. So this uh, verse should come as a reminder to us. We can feel in this whole series of verses the enthusiasm of the speakers, or speaker on behalf of all the others, the Shonakadi Rishi, his enthusiasm for the subject, 
He's, he's really, to use this gone terminology, fired up. He's really into it. He's, he's really enthusiastic to hear about Krishna. He's, um, he's speaking in such a way to, to expressing his enthusiasm and at the same time enlivening Sudha Goswami is going to speak that, that, oh, we, okay, Parikshit came. And then he met with Shukadev. And they're both great devotees from their birth. So there must have been discussion of Krishna. And that's what we should discuss because otherwise we're just wasting our life. And how we are wasting our life, not hearing about Krishna, we'll hear about starting from the next verse. There are many verses describing her. Tarava king najivanti. This, uh, <coughs> the, the, the trees are alive. The bellows of the blacksmith, they also breathe. The, uh, the animals in the village, they're also alive. So there are such, they're alive, but what's the use of their being alive? Uh, yeah. The, the ear which does not hear about Krishna is like the hole in a, the hole in which a snake lives. The eyes that do not see Krishna, the form of Krishna, they are like the uh, eyes on a peacock tail, which means they look nice, but as far as seeing, they are completely useless. Uh, the legs which do not go to the places of the, to the temple, they are like the tree stumps. So in this way, uh, he's describing that. This, this verse which is just spoken now about the how we, our life is spoiled without hearing about Krishna, that will be elaborated upon in the next several verses. So his, he's expressing his full enthusiasm to hear about Krishna. He doesn't want to hear about anything else. This is fully in the spirit of the Bhagavatam, which states from the very beginning, Dharma kaitava projita atra. Cheating religion is kicked out here. Because actually if we see the Puranas, it's Sutta speaking. And he'll tell all kinds of things. Like in Garuda Purana, there's descriptions of different kinds of ghosts and what you have to do to become this kind of ghost and that kind of ghost and gemology and then all kinds of stories about how you can go to the heavenly planets or to the moon and different things and but the Shonaka and the Rishis, they don't want to hear about all that. We want to hear about Krishna. Parikshit and Shukadev, they met. There must have been discussion about Krishna. They weren't going to talk about different techniques of painting or different gems you can wear to uh, thwart the effects of different uh, planetary influences. They weren't going to discuss they were definitely going to speak about Krishna. And they're both, even among devotees, what is that? Savai Bhagavata Raja. He was, he was a great king. The king was a, he was a great devotee. So they, they were going to talk about Krishna, not even in an official way, means a philosophical way, but they both had great feeling for Krishna. They were both rasik bhaktas, very feelingful devotees for Krishna. So the sages, they had had enough about hearing about gemstones and demigods and places of pilgrimage that you can go to to get free of your sinful reactions. They had all this kind of thing. They had enough of all that. They wanted to hear about Krishna. And they're exhorting us also the hearers, after so many thousands of years, they're exhorting us also to hear about Krishna, to utilize our life for hearing and having others hear also. What is that verse? Huh? Shinvatam, what is that? No, 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 In the, at the end of the Bhagavatam. Uh, we, they hear and make others hear also. It's right at the end of Bhagavatam. No, I can't remember. You probably don't know it. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. There's a... 
We should know all these verses, actually. I should know. Uh, anyway, you can find that later. But the devotees, they hear about Krishna and they make others hear about Krishna also. So this is how we should utilize our time. I'm trying to remember it, but I, I can't remember. Uh, hmm? No, 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 not that verse. It comes in the verse uh, Bhaktya Where is that? Bhaktya The Bhakti comes from Bhakti. What is that? Bhaktya Sujatya. Hmm? Ah, uh, look that up. No, no, no. It's a, it's a Understood verse, not such a long verse. Bhaktya Sanjate Ab. Smaranta Smarantascha. Yeah, it's not rem- it's remembering and making others remember. Smaranta Smarantascha. Nitoghoga Haram Hari. Bhaktya Sanjate Ab Bhaktya. Vibrati utpalakam tanum. So what's the translation? They, they remember and make others remember. And then? Ah, oh, they discuss. Yeah, it's put like that. Devotees of the Lord constantly discuss the glories of the Lord. They remember the Lord. Remind one another, yeah. Smaranta smarayantascha. Hmm. Then? By their emotion, it is a good sort of video work. The devotees clean the people who are in this world. Who takes away from them everything in the world. In the reflect of all of the things that you will be able to withdraw our body. And thus, you are not in this world. And each other in the world is considered to be the same. Hmm. Yeah. Actually, the, the, it's good to know the Sanskrit also because there are certain points in the Sanskrit which the very structure of the language which doesn't come out in the English translation. Smaranta smarayantascha. Remembering, making others remember. Then bhaktya sanjataya bhaktya. Bhakti, from bhakti comes bhakti. From uh, sadhana bhakti comes raga bhakti. That's usually taken in that context. Which which canto is that? Twelfth canto, eleventh canto. Hmm. And so many important teachings in the eleventh canto, twelfth canto. Eleventh canto is extremely rich. It's it's uh, Bhagavad Gita again, spoken to Uddhava, but with more time. <laughs> so in more detail. I was just reading yesterday from uh, Srila Prabhupada lecture, which I never heard or read before. It has just been released. And Srila Prabhupada went on for some time saying, Bhagavad Gita, it's just, it's just very basic, just for beginners. Because it's within Mahabharat, which is for Sri Shudra Dvija Bandhunam, for the women, Shudras and fallen members of the Brahmana caste, Traina Veda Gochara, they're not, Traina Shuti Gochara, they're not fit to hear the Vedas. So for them Mahabharata was compiled. So Srila Prabhupada, and he said it's spoken to Arjuna, he wasn't a scholar. <laughs> so it was just very easily put. And Prabhupada said that, but Arjuna understood it in maximum it took one hour to speak and Arjuna understood it. Whereas now in Kali Yuga has gone on 5,000 years and what was easily understood at that time, now big, big scholars, they spend their whole life, they can't understand it at all because people have become more stupid in Kali Yuga. So, 
Prabhupada this is A, B, C, D, Bhagavad Gita. But we can't follow it. We have difficulty to. If you see all the terms that Krishna and Arjuna use in Bhagavad Gita, it means they are, of course Krishna knows, but Arjuna, he also, he, when Krishna used words like guna, dharma, karma, jnana, bhakti, yoga, all these words, Arjuna, he was familiar with all the concepts. It wasn't that Arjuna was a complete neophyte. He had some understanding already. He had some misunderstandings too. So, his questions that, uh, what is that? Uh, the King Karma Purushottama, Adibhut. Hmm? King Tad Brahma Kemadhyatmam, King Karma Purushottama, Adibhutam to King Protam, Adidaivam to. So all these questions, uh, I mean, uh, they're quite questions, aren't they? Quite. In- Krishna just answers them with one word. Aksharam Brahma Paramam. Then you might ask, what is Brahma? Akshara. Then again, you might ask, well, what's Akshara? <laughs> Akshara Brahma Swabhavo Dhyatma Muchyata. So really the only question that Krishna gets into in that whole chapter he gets into in detail is prayana kale chakatam geyo vihi How can that lord of sacrifice, Adi Yagya, be known at the time of death by one who is following the rules and regulations? It's already presumed that you have to do some sadhana to remember him. So Arjuna, I mean, he wasn't a great scholar, he was just an ordinary person. Ordinary, in, in terms of scholarship, he was Arjuna wasn't known as a scholar. He was a great fighter, he was a great moral person, he was a great friend and devotee of Krishna, but he wasn't known as a great scholar. Bhishma was very learned. Vyasa was, on the, on the earth at that time, Vyasa was, Arjuna, he wasn't a great scholar. Even among the Pandavas, then Yudhishthira would have to be the most Brahminical, in, in fact. What's that? So, Hare Krishna. Any question? Immediately ask question. Don't waste any time. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. Ayo Harati Vai Pongsam. Yeah, yeah. Why what? I couldn't understand the question. Parikshit was saved within the womb by Krishna. Why did Krishna? I couldn't understand the rest of the question. Why didn't he stop the curse? Why did Krishna not stop the curse? You can ask Krishna if you like. (laughs) He had some purpose to do in saving Parikshit at that time and there was some other purpose in letting him be cursed at that time. In fact, not only did he not stop the curse, but he arranged it. It was all arranged. Otherwise, Parikshit insulted Shamika Rishi. He would normally not do that, but he did so, so that to arrange that Shringi, the son of Shamika, would curse Parikshit. So Krishna does different things in different times for, for different reasons. So there was a reason to save Parikshit at that time and a reason for him to be cursed at another time. It's not all stereotypes. Mm. <coughs> Is, is time. Uh, we are able to understand, even though we have a useful time for 
Okay, to paraphrase the comment, uh, we're trying our best, but the speed we're going, we're not going to make it. We're not going to be fully situated in pure devotional service. Will Krishna look after us? Yes! We have that faith that Krishna will look after us. And often we see that devotees um, who've been trying... At the end, Krishna just burns out all their residual attachments and arranges for them to go back to Godhead. So we have to try the best we can and the result is with, is in Krishna's hands. Another thing, if we're thinking about our own self-interest is, uh, it's very good for our own self-interest to do the best that we can to preach Krishna consciousness. Because others can come up and they can help us also. <laughs> Just like we see these young boys in the Gurukul. If they're trained very nicely from the beginning, then uh, they'll have a good chance. So, they become pure devotees, they'll be very merciful. So, they can help us also. Those that help to put them in that position. Again, we have to remember, Neha Bikramana Shosti Pratyabhayana Vidyate Svapanapya Siddhana Chayate Mahato Bharat. Even though we feel ourselves incapable to properly and fully execute devotional service, still we should know that it's all auspicious. We should do to the best of our capacity knowing that if we try, certainly Krishna will appreciate that. That's not an excuse for cultivating material desires or harboring material desires, but we should know that Krishna will, will help us despite our incapacity. Ah. How to avoid whimsical behavior. Well, just don't be whimsical. That's <laughs> if you have a whimsical nature, then you need to uh, be under some discipline. The problem is that people of whimsical nature, they usually don't like to be disciplined. So then we have to see how to engage everyone in various ways. But you can never, I mean, people can change after coming to devotional service also. I was just reading about a Tamal Krishna Maharaj. Maybe most of you, well, if you read Prabhupada Lilamrita, you would have heard of him. Otherwise, you wouldn't know of him much. But he was... Uh, Maybe you could say the most among the disciples of Srila Prabhupada, maybe the most prominent of all. So, before he came to the movement, just before he came to the movement, he was playing on a playing on a flute in a not in a concert or anything, just like a hippie. So. After he came to the movement, you wouldn't think, you couldn't imagine that he was doing that. He became so strict and regulated. Uh, authoritarian, disciplinarian. So it's 
People can change also. Yeah. In Satya Yoga, people had a long life compared to people in Kali Yoga. In Kali Yoga, we have a short span of life given by Krishna. Before we are realizing Krishna consciousness, we are dying. Well, we have short lives in Kali Yoga because everything in Kali Yoga is cut down due to due to it's a time in which people who have lived sinfully are born. So everything is reduced in Kali Yoga. What's that verse? Nene, Kalena Balena Rajan. How does that begin? I'm a little tired. Tataschanu dinam satyam. What is it next? Satyam shocham shama daya Kalena Balena Rajan. Nangshan yayu. Balang smriti. So, smriti hi. It's for me. Day by day, my memory is getting less. So with the passing of every day in Kali Yoga, all these things will be reduced. Truthfulness, cleanliness, tolerance, mercy, dharma, uh, bodily strength, uh, longevity, and memory. So everything is short. We don't get born in Kali Yoga because we want to realize Krishna. We get born in Kali Yoga because we want to forget Krishna. We want to forget Krishna. It's actually Krishna's mercy that we have a short lifespan because if we had a long lifespan, we'd commit so many sinful activities that we wouldn't get born again in the human birth until probably the next Brahma comes. So, short lifespan. But one, uh, amidst all of this, is the great uh, opportunity, at least for part of Kali Yoga, of chanting Hare Krishna. So we get that opportunity. And we can become, that. all Shastras say, all Acharyas say, we can become fully Krishna conscious. We can go back to Godhead by chanting Hare Krishna. You have to be serious about it. Ah. Yes, Srila Prabhupada mentioned about charity. What's it got to do with the verse? You might have wondered. Uh, it seems to be this section about charity in the purport seems to be, to be a quotation from Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. He is mentioned. Quoting... <coughs> Quoting from Smriti Shastras, uh, charity should be given to a brahmana. If you give even to some kind of brahmana in name only, then you still get back double what you gave in the next life. If you give to a learned brahmana, you get back many times more. And if you give to one who's realized the import of brahman, you get it back unlimitedly. What does that mean? You get back more than money, you get spiritual benefit. So what I understand, this is being quoted in uh, connection with Parikshit meeting meeting Shukadev. That the point of uh, the point of meeting a pure devotee, that's how Srila Prabhupada explains it. The ultimate core There is guarantee of money is being returned if given in charity regardless of the proportion. Similarly, a moment passed in... This is connecting the two things. Similarly, a moment passed in the association of pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental messages of the Lord is a perfect guarantee for eternal life for returning home back to Godhead. So that takes up the other point we've just been discussing also. So the point is that if you give in charity, you're guaranteed return. And if you give to a pure devotee, great devotee, then you get unlimited return. 
So in the same way, if you spend even a moment with a pure devotee, then you're guaranteed to go back to God if you hear from him. So there you are. You're all guaranteed to go back to God. But that doesn't mean that we should just waste our time because uh, it might get delayed if we don't take it, take this opportunity seriously. So that's the point being made. This discussion of charity has been given in this purport to say that it, it, it's all auspicious. You, you don't lose. You're never the loser by giving charity. Although actually if you give charity to a sinful person, like someone might want to give, the, the drunkard wants money for wine. So you give him money for wine and then you become implicated that by that charity, you become implicated in his sinful re- activity. He may be very grateful. Oh, thank you so much. You gave me money. Now I can go and buy some wine. He may be happy. And you may think, I did a good deed, but you become implicated. So that's why I said, charity should be given to a brahmana. So charity given to a brahmana, that is, uh, it's not, you're not losing anything. You're all, you actually gain by that. So in the same way, if we associate with devotees, We never lose, we always gain.